How are you guys and girls? Welcome back to another fun episode of Tom Flair Bartending Tips. Now today I'm going to be talking to you about five moves which you should be doing today already in your flair repertoire. Prelins on prelins on prelins on prelins on prelins on prelins I saw but my run through the money, the press will be calling. Left on my blessings, I feel like I'm falling. The birdie is back, tell me I'm garbage, I'm going through something, that's why. Now these five moves, these five moves are important because they are the concept of other moves. Uh, they are very popular moves to be doing. Uh, they are moves which test certain skills which you have uh, and they are moves which you can use behind the bar um, when you're bartending, you can use them on stage and they just set the precedent for, for, the, for future upgraded moves as well. Without further ado, let's get on to the first move. The first move is the tin roll. Ooh. Now the tin roll is possibly the most performed move in flair. Why is this move important? Well, rolling in general is, is a good move to learn and this sets the precedence for future rolls which you can then start doing. Uh, the way you do this move is you're going to hold it with four fingers on top of the tin, one thumb underneath the tin and you're going to throw up and you want to learn to spin the tin like this so you can't actually see it spinning on there but what's happening is the tin is spinning as I'm letting go my fingers are rolling off the top of the tin and the tin is spinning now you want the tin to fly flat horizontally like this if it starts to wobble like that it means you're holding the tin either too far this way or too far this way or when you spin it excuse me when you spin it you're giving too much force on this side or on this side so just generally in your fingertips okay up and you want to get that motion now once you've got used to doing that, then you're just gonna stick your hand underneath the tin. Now, if I do it this way, you'll, you'll notice a little bit more that I'm not just putting my hand there and letting it roll, okay? That can work, but you wanna move your arm through the tin, okay? And you kind of move your body through the tin to balance it as it comes up your arm. And then what you're gonna start doing you want to start seeing how much you can put, how much control you can put onto that. You want to be able to dictate, okay, I want to catch it in front of me. Catch it in front of you. Okay, I want to catch it behind me. I want to catch it behind me. I want to catch it behind my head. Catch it behind my head. Now, the way I do that is to catch it in front of me, I kind of lean back a little bit to let the, to open up this part of my body and to let the tin fall this way. If I want to lean, go behind me, I'll lean forward. Ugh. And sometimes it comes all the way up there, but if you lean forward, it's more likely to go behind you. And behind my head, you want to, I roll it generally quite fast. Oops, so it goes fast towards my head, and then I get my hand around and I catch it up there. Mmm, the tin roll. Okay, the second move is actually a genre of moves, uh, and that is to do with the napkins. Do, 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 do. Now, you may think, oh, napkin moves, yeah, the boring, da 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 The thing with a napkin move is that it hasn't been explored that much. But, let's take the, the world famous napkin spin move. There is so many different variations and ways that you can develop this move that we haven't really touched the surface on it just yet. So if you get your, your napkin, you start figuring out different ways of how you can spin this napkin. Maybe you can do something whilst it's spinning in the air, turn around on the spot, uh, do it from behind your back, shadow pass it under your arm, around your body. The possibilities are endless. You just have to figure out how to make it work. Now how you do the simple version of the napkin spin is having your fingers underneath the napkin, you're gonna flip it out, put your hand underneath, and place it down on top of the bar top. You've probably seen me explain this one before, but you should, be learn you should be learning how to do this. I'm gonna give you another one, which is the napkin turnover, Ooh. which is more simple, but it's all about how you make the move look, okay? So you're gonna hold the napkin like this, fingers on top, thumb behind, so it's nice and floppy in your hand. And what you're gonna do, you bring, if I do it this way, you'll see, you bring your napkin towards, you turn your hand over, and the, the napkin falls on top of the fingers. Then you bring it down towards you again, and you open up your hand, where your, your knit finger's holding the napkin, there's my bar top in front of me. Open up your hand and you place your hand down onto the bar top. Now air resistance keeps that napkin on, <clears throat> excuse me, on the back of your fingers. Ready, open up the hand, boom. Uh, and then you can place it down onto the bar top. This is a nice, elegant move to use, but you have to get that elegance on the move to be able to make the move look good. So have a little trial out with napkin moves, see how you get on and try and come up with something which has never been done before. Okay, move number three 
is, again, it's kind of a genre of moves, which is the thumb rolls. Thumb rolls, thumb rolls, thumb rolls. Why is this move important? Because what it does, it gets you training with both hands. It gets your fingers very dexterous uh, to be able to perform moves later on, like multiple grabs and things like this. Get your brain to how to use different things with different hands at the same time. So basically, th spinning up and down, thumb rolling up and down at the same time. This will also help with craft flair move later on with spoons and jigs and things like this. So, how do you do a thumb roll? Well, you've got up and you've got down. Okay, now the up is basically you're pushing the base of the shaker up using these fingers here. So you've got these two fingers here and the thumb on this side. You can hold it of all four fingers if you like. And you're pushing the base of the shaker up, all right? And you, what you wanna do is you wanna let the shaker roll around your thumb. Now, it's a very, very slight m movement to be able to move your hand in the right way so that the shaker just rolls around your thumb. At the beginning, the shaker may come away from your thumb and go up like this. That's okay, but the more you do it, you want it to be rolling around your thumb and keeping touching your thumb. It should be a contact move so you can keep your eyes closed and perform this move without looking uh, at all, okay? So that's thumb roll up, then you have thumb roll down, and the best way I was taught this many, many years ago was, uh, it's basically the opposite. You're gonna push the base of the shaker, and what you wanna do, have your other hand underneath, push the base of the shaker, let it roll around your thumb and catch it in the other hand, okay? Just keep your other hand still. Now what's gonna start happening is you'll, you'll feel that shaker moving around, and then you can just, after a while, you just stop catching it in the other hand, and you move your hand down to catch it in the same hand. Okay, move number five, another genre of moves. This genre of moves is stalls and balances. Now I've done videos on stalls and balances before, but I'm gonna to talk to you about it again. Now you have the hand stall, okay? You have the arm stall, which I've spoken about. You have the reverse forearm stall. Now, oh, sorry, you have the elbow stall, this is. Uh, and you have the reverse forearm stall. Now I'm gonna talk straight on to the reverse forearm stall. The best way I can explain it is put your hand on the bar top, the hand where you're gonna hold the bottle, and you're gonna bring it back as much as you can. And what you wanna do is you wanna get that flat surface in front of you. So your hand is next to your ear, palm facing up, okay? And you don't want it palm facing down because you're gonna have a, you're gonna have a bone on top of your arm here, which if you catch the bottle on that's gonna hurt. You wanna twist your arm up so you have the muscle part of your, of your arm facing upwards, okay? Then you wanna place the bottle somewhere where it feels comfortable, in the middle of the arm, okay? Now some people's arms are different to others, some people will have to balance it a lot more, like mine, I've got skinny arms, but somebody who have bigger arms may find this move a bit easier, they may be able to balance it much easier. So you wanna find a comfortable spot and then you're just gonna to learn to balance it like this, okay? Once you've got that balance, then you wanna start learning how to throw the bottle onto there. And then it's a case of as the bottle comes up, you place your arm underneath and you just put it into place, so you go whoosh. Okay, so it looks really nice behind the bar, it presents the bottle very well. It's a great move to use whilst you're working, it's a great move to use on the stage. It's a more difficult one because the bottle's gonna come up really high and land on there. But any kind of balancing move, any kind of stalling move is great to learn. Learning how to balance, learning how to stall is definitely something which you should be putting into your flair routines behind the bar uh, or shows. Okay, the fifth and final move is all about pouring. Now, there's no point being able to do all these moves if you're not finishing off with a pouring move. But you can also do long pours where you come up and you do a nice cut off at the top. Or the one that I like to use behind the bar is the reverse pour. So you do half a shot beforehand, one, two, and then you swipe around and you do another half a shot afterwards, okay? Or the other one which I used to use, which was I called the rocket pour, which was a reverse pour here, down, and then a behind the back. There is an upgrade to this, which I'm gonna show you. So the long pour is just a case of, once you're pouring, you lift it up high, and you're just gonna try and keep the pour spot in the same position, and bring the bottle down. It's not a wee, like a flip around like this. It's up, bottle down, and across, just nice and gently. And the quicker you can do this with a, <clears throat> a smaller amount of motion, you see that liquid drop. Ready? Oh. That was a little bit of a spill, but you get the idea. 
The other one, which is the reverse pour, which they use it in the WFA gradings, uh, and you see a lot of bartenders using it, starts off like this, okay? So you do a normal pour, bounce down. Now you swipe in front of the shaker, and I change my grip to this. So I'm in, instead of from sort of beer grip, I go beer grip, but down the bottle. Then I turn over, and I'm in this position right here. Now, why is this one good to use? Well, if you wanna save space, instead of swinging up here, everything happens in front of you where you're standing. So if you're very on a very crowded bar, you can just use this move straight away. You can start from this position. You swing it up and then back down again. You're not using any extra space. Whereas here, you know, the bottle is swinging out this way uh, and then you're kind of using that extra space, your elbow's coming out. Now, if you look here, everything is nice and controlled and within the region of this area. Super easy, super simple. Now, the, the last pour is the, the, the rocket pour, which is holding the bottle in a tennis grab. So if it's on the bar top, thumbs down, grab hold of the bottle, and then you're just gonna come over and pour. Or you can bounce it in front of you. Always be careful there's nothing in front of you. And then you throw it behind your back. Now the upgrade to this is quite a tough one, is where you bounce, you throw the bottle upside down, and then you're gonna catch it behind your back and bring it up. See if I can do it, I haven't done it for quite some time. Now the trick with this is when you catch that bottle behind your back, so as, as you're pouring, you bounce, you throw the bottle up like this, it comes behind your back, and then you wanna catch it that way, okay? So you're catching upside down still, and then when you catch upside down, you swing it down and around in a big circular motion. That keeps the force inside the bottle, pushing the liquid to the base of the bottle so you're not spilling it. So you need to start putting these moves into your vocabulary of moves. And don't just do the ones which I've shown you today. Try and develop these moves and try and find new ones and different ones which you can start using and putting behind the bar into your competitions and into your shows. Mm, sweet! Let me know how you got on with these moves, guys and girls. Please don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very, very much for watching if you watched until the end. And for those who didn't watch until the end as well. Until next time, see you then. Bitch, I got prelins on prelins on prelins on prelins on prelins on prelins that's all, but my run through the money, the pressure be calling. Left on my blessings, I feel like I'm falling. The birdie is back. Tell me I'm garbage, I'm going through something, that's why I ain't calling. Phone and progression, it's all that I wanted. The phone and affection, I summon and dub it. Cause bitch, I got prelins on prelins on prelins on prelins on prelins on prelins that's all, but my run through the money, the pressure be calling. Left on my blessings, I feel like I'm falling. The birdie is back. Tell me I'm.